I came to citizen science um, because we we were really trying to find this rare species of ladybug, which is the the one we were looking for at first was the nine spotted ladybug, and one we're we're still interested in now. It, it's our state insect in New York. It's a, it's a symbol of of New York's biodiversity, and it hadn't hadn't been seen for over ten years in in New York, and so we would go out a lot and sample for it in all kinds of habitats, but. We're a limited number of, of people, and, and so we thought if we could just incorporate more people into this process, then the chance of finding one would be higher. And once we could start finding them, then we can maybe figure out why they're declining and, and, and maybe keep that from, from happening. And so we first started with uh, Master Gardeners, and, and they were a great group. They're, they're all over the state, and we had them put up these uh, yellow sticky cards in their gardens. And so all they did is had that they put them up, leave them up for two or three days, put plastic on them, and, and send them in to us. And it worked great. We found lots of ladybugs, none of the rare ones, as it turned out. Um, but the problem was with that method that any ladybug that got on there would die. And so we're trying to tell people how important these rare ladybugs are, and yet we're involving them in killing the ladybugs. And so it wasn't a great, it wasn't a great fit. It was kind of a sticky situation, really. And, and so, then, <laughs> and, and so uh, what we decided was is we needed a, a better way to, to, to do that, and not only to get the data, but a better way to, to manipulate and serve that data to people that might be interested in seeing it. So that's when we hit on the idea of doing, instead of uh, a collection of pinned or, or dead ladybugs, we would start a, a virtual collection of ladybugs. And so then we started going out, especially with school-age kids, and having them collect ladybugs, take digital images, which you know has the technology for that has really just blossomed at the same time that, that we're doing this project. And, and they send those in to us, and then we now have a, for every data point that we use for our analysis, we have a virtual voucher. Versus people that use pinned specimens, maybe one-tenth of one percent of what they use is pinned. And so we are now not killing any of the ladybugs that we find. Um, we have uh, a, a, a huge virtual or, or digital collection of the, of the images. And we've been able to, when people send us in the rare ones, we can go out. We have sort of a, a, a quick uh, response team that we can go out and then we can sample in those areas. Like I went out to. Uh, a six-year-old in Oregon uh, found a, a nine-spot ladybug, which is the one we're looking for. We went out there and collected with her around her yard and um, brought back 13 of those ladybugs. And now, we, which I think you have some film of already, we, we have a colony of those in, in the lab. And we're already making some discoveries of, of why they may have declined. I, I, don't, I don't remember doing, I don't think I ever did citizen science as a, as a, as a young citizen. Uh, my first exposure was really with the uh, master gardeners, and then uh, based on that, then we we started we realized that the the lab of ornithology here at Cornell had a huge citizen science component, and and Rick Bonney there in the lab was sort of my mentor and helped us build this the lost ladybug project, which is which is what we have now. So the idea with the Lost Ladybug Project is to really integrate the, the teaching and the research. So to teach people about the importance of biodiversity and, and, and specifically about the importance of ladybugs, that they're not just cute, that they have a real role in the environment, and to show them that there, there's, there's many different species. And then also to have people find what ladybugs are in all these different areas all across the U.S. so that we can start to see and, and we are already starting to see patterns of where there are rare ones, where there are rare native ones, and, and then also where are there high concentrations of the introduced ladybugs that may be displacing the rare natives. And so just by the, the points that people have found of the rare ones and the, the native ones and the, and the foreign ones, we're already starting to see patterns that are going to help us see, OK, these are the kind of conditions where rare ones persist. And these are the conditions where the, where the foreign ones just take over. So again, the idea was is that this is, with ladybugs, they, they vary from year to year a lot. And they vary from place to place a lot. And so if you're going out with just, say, four or five 
ladybug experts, which there are maybe a dozen in the, in the country, then you just can't go to enough places at enough times to get the data point that you need to get the pattern. And yet, if you have thousands of people all over the country, then we can really start seeing where the lights are blinking on and off, and we're already being able to see the, the patterns that we need to try to save these, these species. The Lost Ladybug Project is doing really well. We had a, an excellent summer where uh, we have uh, all three of the really rare species, one of which, the two-spotted ladybug, was found right here in New York. And so it's been very exciting, uh, both in terms of um, we found multiple sightings from, from all kinds of different observers of these rare ones. We're getting a sense of a pattern of where they are, which is going to help us. Uh, we've brought them into the lab and already found a few things uh, with our lab experiments that are saying why they've declined. And so it's, uh, it's, 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 been a, it's been a very good summer. I think we've, we've made some real progress. One thing that's been really interesting is we, we brought in a lot of, not a lot, but we brought in some of all these different rare species. And the ones we brought in from the field are significantly smaller then if then when we bring them in from the field we put them in our nice cages and and we give them lots of aphids they have lots of babies those babies grow up the babies are larger than the ones we brought in from the field the foreign ones which are very closely related are the same size in the field and they're already larger um, and then when we grow them up and so it it appears that somehow the uh, the ladybugs, the rare ones, are not getting enough food, and and that does speak to maybe there's some sort of competition going between the the, the two types of ladybugs, and nobody's really documented that before, and so it, it all goes back to like this six year old in in Oregon that that sent in not knowing what she had, sent in these ladybugs. We go out there and collect, and and within you know a couple of months we're able to make this discovery, which I think could end up being pretty important. Uh, we, we certainly have plans for the next three years, and then, then we hope it can progress and, and go on after that.